founder of WideAwakeNews.com, host on the Rinse Radio Network. Are we seeing the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the slumping oil prices, this massive drop in oil leveling out at $66 today? A lot of people think so, myself included, uh, that this is a sign that uh, that uh, the global economy is slowing down and trouble is on the way. But don't take my word for it. I'm going to give you some headlines from establishment mainstream media. You know, this is the same thing that happened in 2007, 2008. Establishment media was out there warning us about these mortgage-backed securities, about the uh, implosion that could come in the housing sector. And sure enough, that came to pass. Well, they're out there again today and, and recently. Today's headlines are from the Telegraph. Bank's $650 billion bet on oil backfires as Brent crude slumps. CNBC came out and said, U.S. crude exports to Asia stall on, on flood of OPEC oil. Bloomberg says, beware of oil debt that lurks in your junk bond ETF. 24-Hour uh, Gold says, uh, Saudi Arabia declares uh, oil war on U.S. fracking. Business Insider, this headline I believe the truest of any, oil crash may be about something much worse than uh, supply glut. Automatic Earth came out with oil, gold, now stocks are about uh, to tumble. This, this is exactly what, ha exactly what happened in 2008. Oil as an indicator showing where we're headed. In fact, Michael Snyder wrote an excellent piece I'll attach to this video where he points out only one time in the history of our country has, has oil ever fallen, $40 in less than six months. And that was in 2008, and we all know what happened, this implosion on Wall Street. Well, it's fallen that much again, $66 a barrel it's uh, resting at today. In 2008, these Wall Street institutions, these too big to fail, these ones that Hank Polson's reached into the financial future of this country and ripped our financial security away in order to uh, benefit these companies, they were tied to mortgage-backed securities. They were tied to the housing sector. And when it imploded, they should have imploded along with it. But that's not what happened. Fast forward to 2014, and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars have been added in the red column for the United States of America, a lot of it in order to uh, facilitate the growth and expansion and the creation of wealth for these same institutions. What are they tied to now? Well, 20% of the junk bond market is tied to the energy sector. So what happens when this massive section of the economy, this massive section of these uh, Wall Street portfolios collapses and uh, falls through the floor? You can be rest assured what's going to happen. You shouldn't be rest assured. You should be terrified of what's coming next. We're seeing mainstream media coming out and warning, warning us of slumping oil prices, just like we saw them come out in 2008. So we can anticipate what's coming. When it comes crashing down and these uh, institutions start to fall and stocks start to fall, you're going to see the same players being drug out before the camera saying, it's time for you to give up more of your financial safety and security uh, in order to save these institutions because they are the economy. That's what they want us to believe. Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, yeah, they want us to believe these institutions and others like them are the true economy of our nation. And in fact, what have they done with this money? Have they created jobs? No, most of these institutions are laying off people. Are we creating jobs in this country? Well, if you consider part-time jobs and less than living wage jobs uh, as a financial boon, then yeah, we're, we're creating mediocre jobs at best. We're going to see a continued degradation of the standard of living and the de degradation of the middle class in this country. Because in 2008, we're sitting at $8 trillion in debt. Now it's $18 trillion in debt. In 2008, we had 20 million people on food stamps. Now we're at 46, 47 million on food stamps. We have 44 million that would be considered to be living in poverty. We have 2.5 million kids that are homeless in this country. We have millennials graduating every single day that are straddled with forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt, and they're entering into the very lowest levels of middle class if they're lucky. The fact is our economic, our real economic situation in our country is far worse than it was in 2008, 2009. And when this next collapse comes, be it the end of 2014 going into 2015, it's going to be a wake-up call for the people that think that the only thing that points to success is a continued increase and escalation of the Dow Jones. Stories are attached. That's all I got.